Okay, good. Okay, so, um, we're ready? Yep. Okay. So just to get things rolling, can you maybe briefly describe your involvement with the funnel, the years you were involved, any particular contributions that you could talk about? Um, I know in, in particular, we'd like to hear a little bit more about um, the European tour that you did with... Um. I'm, I'm difficulty hearing. Oh, sorry. I just yeah. uh, I was wondering if you could describe your involvement with the funnel, um, any particular contributions, the years you were involved, and uh, perhaps the European tour where you took the films around the nine cities. Oh, yeah. Um, well, um, I sort of joined the funnel when it was already a year old. It had been programming at uh, the SEAC building on Duncan Street from in the 77-78 season. And um, I started, I learned about it from my uh, friend Frieder Holkheim, who was in my class at Ryerson film class. And I don't know how he got hooked up with them, but I ran into him on my mail route. I was a letter carrier. And he, he was on, he was living on my route. And he says, oh, he, I told him I was making my films. And, it's a great film. You know, you should come by the funnel and show them. We have these open screenings. And so that's how I got really introduced to how a lot of people in the future got introduced to the funnel was through the monthly open screenings. And I always thought they were the best part of the funnel was the monthly open screenings where anybody could come out and show anything they want on any format, which is still unusual, Super 8, 8 millimeter, 16 millimeter. And uh, so I was shooting my condensed rituals at the time, and I would show them, and I remember them telling me how much they liked my films, uh, in particular Ross McLaren telling me. And so I said, oh, this is my crowd here, and I like this place, because up until then, 77, you know, I was at Ryerson, I left in 74, and there didn't seem to be any community in Toronto. They were there, I didn't find out about them until this. Um, so I started going to the open screenings regularly. Um, and then in mid-78, they had to, uh, there was trouble with SEAC, and they were about to lose the building, so the funnel people called together their first meeting of regulars. And we all decided to form a corporation and find our own space and form a membership where we would all pay a hundred dollar a year membership and we'd use that money to have seed money. And um, and so they spent the, I wasn't involved in looking for a space, but they spent the summer looking for a space and found the space on King Street East and uh, we built it really quickly, I think in five weeks, this cinema out of this empty uh, where uh, um, factory space or studio space, and um, we started uh, again the regular programming to so the new space, and we were showing um, I think the first year they didn't have any funding, and then we got funding after a year or so, and so we were able to programming money, so we were able to have like 60 screenings a year, usually two a week, from September to April, and. Um, there was a board of directors of 10 people, and I was on that, got on that right away, and I was on it for most of the time I was there. Uh, occasionally I would leave the board just to re leave room for more young people. You know, and but, and um, so, I don't know, some people, I was very active, very vocal, and some people would say I was, wasn't was a good board member because I would raise a lot of sensitive issues and the meetings would go really long, <laughs> really long, and they didn't, a lot of people didn't like that. So that was one, one of my contributions. But I uh, also, I uh, just by chance, just lived a couple of blocks down the street. I had moved there before the funnel found the space, so it just lucky for me they found a space just down the street for me. So that meant I was able to go to all the screenings and even more, hang out there, and so I was active in that way. And I really liked the... Um, Theater management job. A lot, you know, we were doing a lot of volunteer work, the board members and and the associate members. When we had screenings, somebody would be assigned the job, and it was my favorite job, so I got to do as I, I tried to do as much as possible. Where you'd call up regulars, not necessarily board members, but associate members, and get them someone to do the door, someone to do projection, someone to sell coffee, and and I loved doing that. And being hanging out in the lobby and greeting people when they came, and so yeah. 
So, uh, and I was making, I got really inspired by the other funnel filmmakers. It was sort of the beginning of the punk scene. So my films that I'd been showing first when I went there, the condensed rituals, I still think are fairly slick by comparison, very conventional. Whereas the funnel sort of punk influence, I started making more raw sort of uh, films, which I still prefer. Uh, performance art and things like that. Um, so I was showing a lot and I had my first couple of solo shows at the funnel. That was one of the nice things when you had, when you were a full member paying your hundred dollars a year and that was hundred twenty dollars a year. You not only got a vote and a say uh, but you could you had full use of all of the equipment including the theater so you could have a solo screening anytime you wanted to just book it. And so I had a couple of solo screenings there that was great, so I was showing a lot. Um, now the European tour, I think that was, um, oh yeah, so we were, we were getting funding for programming and then we started to get money for equipment purchase so we could run workshops and because there was nothing else in Toronto, there was no place in Toronto showing uh, 16 millimeter and Super 8 experimental films. The AGO on occasion would show 16 millimeter avant-garde films, but never Super 8 or 8 millimeter. So there's no place showing this work in different multiple formats. There's no workshops. The Toronto Filmmakers Co-op, which folded you know, after the funnel started, <clears throat> was all 16 millimeter. Uh, and the distribution center, the Canadian Filmmakers Distribution Center, was distributing 16 millimeter films only. There was no Super 8, and um, you know, Funnel became known as sort of the as the Super 8 place. As it, people got the impression that it was just all about Super 8, but really, it was about all formats, including Super 8, which no other organization did. So we were getting. So we were programming 16 millimeter and Super 8 and 8 millimeter, and then we started to get equipment so we could run workshops in 16 millimeter, Super 8 and 8 millimeter, and but we couldn't get distribution funding because the Arts Council would say, well, there's already the CFMDC in Toronto. We don't want to fund two similar places in the same city. But the CFMDC wasn't distributing Super 8, so there was no place distributing Super 8. So we had to start that up without any funding on our own. And um, so we put together this little photocopied, two-sided sheet of paper, which is our brochure listing f uh, films by funnel filmmakers available for distribution, including a bunch of mine. And, and so when we did that, I decided it would be good to do a tour and so I organized, uh, well actually I went over first of all in uh, I think the year before that, I went over first of all in, in 81 and it was sort of like a preview tour. I had a package of funnel films and my films and I was just showing them to programmers. I hitchhiked around and um, just to tell them about the funnel and, and then organized the next year's tour that way of public screenings. And then when I went back the next year in 82, I took Jim Anderson with me and we, because there was two of us, we weren't hitchhiking, we took trains and spent some more money and uh, yeah, we had a lot of sort of high profile screenings in Paris and the London Filmmakers Co-op in London and um, yeah, that was a good tour. So it was sort of like uh, promoting the funnel and getting the word out about the funnel and we never went back though. I remember people saying, are you going to be coming back? Do you keep up this energy? And <laughs> No, we didn't. But we were getting screenings because of our distribution efforts. We published a catalog eventually. We got minimal distribution money, which allowed us to publish a catalog and then a supplement and hire Jim Anderson for part time, you know, one day a week or something. So we were able to do a little bit of official uh, distri distribution with a little bit of funding and um, get screenings in other cities like. Montreal, Detroit, and New York, and the odd funnel program. The tour Jim and I did was um, we gave people options. We had, they could do a whole program of funnel films, or they could do a program of half funnel films, half of mine, or half funnel, or half Jim's, or they could do a program of just Jim and I splitting a program, or each, each of us could do a solo program. So it was different in each city what they showed.